Cash is not king in China. Management consultant Thomas Hoon, who travels to China often, found it out the hard way when he first arrived in Beijing. Well, I'll just basically bring my customers out for a meal. So the meal came up to be about $2,500. So I start flashing my visa card. Hey, can you please accept this? The, the captain who received this card basically say, uh, Sir, I'm, I'm very sorry, we do not accept this card at all. Uh, do you have any kind of other forms of payment? Uh, like a Union Pay, WeChat Pay or Alipay? Of course, this is my first time in China or Beijing. And it was a total root shock to me. <laughs> so lucky for me, my customers was a bit was very accommodating. So he offered to pay for that particular meal. It's estimated that 80% of daily transactions take place on mobile phones. Most of the shops and the restaurants, the, the, the owner, they only accept uh, QR payment. Yeah, no credit card and no cash. So whether you go to the shop to buy something or whether you pay your electricity bills um, or even, even government fines or fees, um, this is done via mobile payments. And um, it's, it's used by everyone. So basically, I don't think you could actually um, live in China without utilizing mobile payments. Tourists have long been left out of this ecosystem because you need a local bank account to link your cards with major payment platforms like WeChat. Many have tried to either use cash or rely on local friends to help them make payments. The issue would be um, sometimes, especially little mom and pop shops, maybe they don't give you change because they say, well, oh, uh, I haven't seen cash in a while, right? We usually rely on online payments, so I can accept this now. I can give you the goods, but I really don't have change for you. That's now about to change. WeChat and Alipay are now accepting international credit cards to be linked to their platforms after an earlier trial in 2019 was halted when the pandemic hit. The move will make it convenient for tourists to do anything from shop at stores to pay at restaurants and book cars or shared bikes. WeChat payment and Alipay is a super app itself. So besides making for payments, there's things like hotels, uh, flights, food delivery, shopping, tickets, everything is within the app. So with now this payment being set up, you are actually allowed to buy those services like a local. So it gives an added super convenience for the foreign visitors going to China. As a business traveler, I also need to keep track of my business expenses. So that app actually keeps track of all the digital, digital expenses that you actually incur. So it allows for... Uh, documentation purposes. Local merchants also stand to benefit, just as China fights sluggish domestic spending. The benefits to them is that they can sell more, right? Like, um, so tourists come and spend and now they won't uh, uh, not buy something because they say, oh, I don't know how to pay or I forgot to get or uh, bring cash with me or go to the ATM, right? So I think from that perspective, uh, you, will, you will also see, of course, increased consumption. And, and I'll be honest, I think the Chinese government is implementing this um, to, to stimulate uh, uh, domestic sales and, and consumption, of course. Um, to make it easier, right? Like this is also, you make it easier for people to pay, they will spend, right? Which is then good for the economy. I tried to link my card with WeChat Pay to see how user-friendly the process is. I started out by downloading WeChat from the App Store. WeChat Pay is not auto-installed on the international version of the app. So you'll have to go to the Me section and toggle to Settings. From there, navigate to Tools and Ways in Pay the local name for WeChat. Enter your name and passport number as well as international credit card details. You'll be prompted to verify your identity by uploading a photo of your passport. It took less than 15 minutes before I passed the verification and my card was officially linked. But not everybody's experience has been as smooth sailing. Experts chalk that down to teething pains. But I've spoken to many people who were unable to link their overseas credit cards and the question is, so how well is this implemented now? It's a little bit too early to tell, but I think uh, we will see over the next couple of months how, how useful this is. In addition, most of the app interface is in Mandarin, so it might be hard for foreigners to navigate. There are some limitations for foreign cards. First, transaction limits are set at 6,000 renminbi for a single payment. That's about $1,100 Sing dollars. 
there's an annual total limit of 60,000 renminbi, 11,000 Sing dollars. Experts say that's probably because of foreign exchange restrictions in China. It's also recommended to set up your account before leaving to iron out any potential issues. Yeah, for sure, you need to prepare a smartphone. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> and second, to, to have the, uh, the data yeah, in China, for sure. And uh, I think it would be better to set up your wallet before you arrived in China. Yeah, it's like, for example, you are a Singaporean. I highly suggest you finish all of the setup, the, the OTP, then the, uh, the credit, a link to your credit card in Singapore. While this isn't a magic bullet that will see tourists return to China at pre-pandemic levels, experts do believe it's a step in the right direction. There are also other bottlenecks that will have to be resolved first. Flights are an issue, like so there, there should be more connectivity. Uh, visas are an issue for, for uh, people from countries that need visas, right? And uh, I would say in order for this to have the maximum impact, right, all these things also need to be restored to uh, what they were in 2019 before COVID. Um, let's not forget China just opened their borders earlier this year, right? So um, I'm excited to see where this will go over the next couple of years.